Okay, so this video is going to be on writing the equation of an absolute value function given its graph. So <clears throat> what we just need to remember and recap really quickly is that this is going to be based upon, so this new equation we're going to write is going to be based upon the parent function. So this is an absolute value function, and the parent function is f of x equivalent to the absolute value of x. And what we just need to remember is that it's behavior. So I'm not going to plot the graph. Well, maybe I will. So let's do that. So let's plot this graph, so the original function. So the original function starts at 0, 0, and has this ratio of over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2, over 3, up 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and, and so forth. So, um, so just to basically reiterate on this one, just so you see what's going on, okay? In blue here, this is what we call the parent function, okay? So and essentially what I'm taking a look at is, how does the new function act versus the old function? And... And that's how we come up with the new equation. So the old function goes basically over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. And we're going to use that to help us. And we're also going to take a look at where does it start, known as its vertex. So its vertex was originally at 0, 0, compared to the new vertex, which is at negative 2, 4. So <clears throat> what we did in a, another video I explained is what we noticed is that when the vertex shifted to the left, we actually had an operator of addition inside of the absolute value. And when it shifted up, it was also addition. So what happened was if something shifted right, it was subtraction. If it shifted down, it was subtraction. If it shifted right, it was still addition inside. It was a subtraction inside. And if it went up, it was an addition outside. So what we learned is that the operator on the inside moved the function the opposite way. And the operator on the outside, when it was addition or subtraction, moved it in that exact direction. And those were done via just by shifting translations. So... We're going to take those basic premises and we're going to write the new function. So the new vertex is at the coordinate pair of negative 2, 4. So what that means, okay, is that this vertex was shifted 2 to the left. So this new function, we're just going to call it g of x, okay, and g of x is created from f of x. And what we did here is we simply took the absolute value and we're going to take this x and we're going to say, okay, let's do the absolute value of x and we're going to add 2. Okay, because if we shift left, it was the opposites we add to, and then it went up 4. So in this case, remember, the outside was a direct addition of what it was, so up 4. Now, the next thing we have to take a look at is we take a look at it from its stationary line, its fixed line. And its fixed line is a line that goes through its a horizontal line that goes through its vertex. So I'm going to get rid of the parent function now for this case, so I can draw on this horizontal line. So this horizontal line goes through the vertex right here. And what we're going to take a look at is we're going to base our values of our functions and what they do off of this line. So what we begin to notice for this one is that when I go over one, I go up one, two units to get back on the line. If I go over two units, I have to go up four. So the old function, right, was over one, up one, or it was over two, up two. And now what you see is that we have a common ratio. And the common ratio of going up 1 is now 1 to, to 2. And what was usually up 2 is now up 4. So this ratio, if we take a look at it from the idea of the standpoint of old to new, is that if I go over 1 unit, I have to go up 2. So what ends up happening here is we create a ratio of that I'm taking a look at how my old Okay, my old change in y maps to my new change in y, and the old change in y was a value of 1, and the new change in y is a value of 2. So what that creates is a multiplier, what we call 2 to 1. Now, you don't always have to use the first, because what if I didn't go up a whole integer amount on moving over 1? What you can do is you can use any one. So what I mean by that is, as opposed to going over 1 and figuring out the new ratio of up 1, just remember that in absolute value, if I moved over, say, 3, 1, 2, 3, right? When I moved up th over 3, it would have been going up 3. But instead of going up 3, so this vertical distance here of being 3 isn't it. Going up 3 does not put me back on my line. So how much do I have to go? And I can go up 1, 2, 3 more, which is a total of 6. So what I now have is I have a new ratio of 6 to 3. Well, 6 to 3 simplifies to 2, which is important. Because what this is called is it's called, it's a dilator, okay? It's a coefficient of dilation. And a coefficient of dilation is a multiplier. So what we have is that the absolute value function must be multiplied by the value of 2. So let's go on and check out another example.
So here you see another graph, okay? And this one looks much wider. So, but we're gonna go about it the same way. So the first thing we gotta check is, we're gonna create this new function and it's gonna be called, I'll call it h of x this time. And h of x is gonna be based upon f of x. And f of x, so we know over here to the left, f of x is equivalent to the absolute value of x. So it's crucial to understanding how the original absolute value acts so that I can write a new equation based upon it. So in this equation, what I notice is that the original function was centered at 0, 0. That's where its vertex was. Now my new function has a vertex, and the vertex is just where the two rays meet. So these two rays meet at the coordinate pair 5, 1. So what I noticed before was when I had a value that shifted the vertex to the right, what I was doing in the absolute value is I was actually subtracting. So this function h of x is going to start off with me not writing, not me writing absolute value of x plus 5, but it will start off with the absolute value of x minus 5. What I also noticed then was that when my vertex shifted up, that actually mapped directly to what it was. So because it's going up, I add 1 on the outside of the function. So remember, the shift left or right is caused by the value inside the absolute value, and the shift up or down is called by the addition or subtraction outside of it, and inside of it, it's the reverse value, and on the exterior, it's the exact value. Now, the last thing we have to check is, we have to check the ratio of change. The original parent function, okay, of absolute value went over 1 and up 1. So what does this function do? So normally, right, we go over 1, up 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a ratio. And that ratio, okay, is going to be this idea of the new to old. So how much do I move over, okay, when I move over 1? And now when I look at this, that could be a little bit of a problem. Because if I go over 1, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much am I moving up. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out a place where I actually move up an actual integer amount. So as opposed to before, it was kind of easy because I moved over 1 and I was able to move up a whole integer amount. This time, unfortunately, I'm not able to do that. This time, I move over 1, which is an integer amount. But the problem is, is that when I go up, I have this value that's not an integer. So what I'm going to be looking for, okay, is I'm going to be looking for how much do I have to move over to then move up one integer amount or move up 200 amounts, or 300 amounts. So in this case, what I notice is if I go over 1, 2, so if following along this line, right, I end up going a whole integer right here. So to get to that whole integer amount, okay, I have to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 1. So in this case, we have a ratio. And that ratio, in this case, is going to be 1 to 4. And that ratio now is my multiplier. And if you notice, Okay, if I go over 1 this time, that approximately looks like it's only going up a quarter of the way. So my ratio that I've got going on right now is this idea of 1 to 4. So the old, right, is 4, and I would go up 4, right? But now the new, so when I usually went over 4, okay, in the old, I would go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. But now... In the new, I'm going over 4, but then I'm going up 1. So we're still using that idea of new to old. Okay, It's just now, instead of using the, the first point, we're going to go all the way out until we use the fourth point. And the old ratio, again, for absolute value, if I checked out the absolute value of 4, that gave me a value of 4. So now what we're going to do, and the whole reason I'm doing this again, is we're looking at when do I go an integer amount to help me do something with an easier ratio. So in this case, the old was, I went up, up 4, but instead of doing that, I'm now going to look at this, and I'm going to say I go up 1. So now what I have is an integer that we have the equation for, and then we're done. If you want to check this, all you have to do is take any x-coordinate from your point that is on your line, plug it in, and make sure it makes that correct output. So let's try another one. All right, so last example here. Let's just take a look at it uh, again. So what we need to know is that everything is going to be based off of <clears throat> this absolute value, this function this we're calling f of x, of absolute value of x. So to start this problem off, <clears throat> we're going to call it some new function. In this case, I'm just called g of x. And I'm going to base g of x, this new function, based upon 
this old function, okay? So a couple things we've been talking about again is that let's take a look at where the old function started. The old function, the original parent function, started at 0, 0, and this function starts at a new coordinate, and that new coordinate is negative 6, negative 4. So the new vertex is at this point, negative 6, negative 4. So now what we learned is that there was a quick and easy way of figuring out what we were doing. And what we noticed is that when the function was moving left, it looked like that was the value we were adding to the value of x. And indeed, that's actually what it ends up being. It ends up being a special coordinate. So it ends up, because we moved it left, that I'm writing this as x plus 6. And then what we have is that when it moved down, we recognize that that was the value that we were directly adding or subtracting to the outside of the absolute value function. In this case, it's down 4, so we're going to subtract 4. So what this takes care of, it takes care of what we're doing to every point. So every point, we start off by shifting left 6 and then down 4. Now, what it doesn't take care of for us is the way that the graph is formed from there. So this will take care of our starting point. But the original function, for the absolute value function, what we noticed was that it started at 1, moved over 1, and went up 1. It went over 2 and went up 2. So now this time we're going to take a look at if I go over 1, where do I go to get back onto my line? So if I go over 1, I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. And what you have there is that now I've got this thing of going over 1 is mapped to going down 5. So if I create this ratio, what happens is that normally if I went over 1, up 1, the distance was a distance of 1. I now have a distance of an old ratio to a new ratio. And the distance of the old ratio was 1, and the new ratio is negative 5. So what I now have is this distance of the new distance of negative 5 to the old of 1. And what you get here is I have negative 5 divided by 1, which ends up being a multiplier of negative 5. So what that means is, from this point, or from this fixed line, okay, if I think about the distance, that's what absolute value kind of relates to, okay, the distance from this fixed line originally was 1, but now it's a distance of negative 5. So that is what we call a stretch. And that stretch is created from a number that ends up being larger than 1. And negative 5, the absolute value of it, ends up being 5, which is larger than 1. So what I have here is a final equation of which I now have the equation for an absolute value that has some transformations to it transformations in this case are a vertical stretch by factor of 5 except it's negative because it's going down and then I have a translation left 6 and down 4 so I hope that helps with whatever you're working on